They're the closest U.S. soldiers to Russia's border. Training with live fires in NATO ally Estonia on how to take turf from an enemy. The overall end state of this is the platoon seizing that key piece of terrain, which is that enemy trench line. Let's go, first squad, move! Let's go, let's go! U.S. soldiers with the 101st Airborne Division eliminate simulated enemy scouts and defenses. Find the hell, find the hell, find the hell! At a training site less than 50 kilometers from Russia. Alpha team, move up! Which invaded its non-NATO neighbor Ukraine one year ago. And these are real case scenarios. You are seeing this play out on the battlefield in Ukraine. Yeah, with any type of training exercise, we want to provide the most realistic uh, training environment for our soldiers to better prepare them and our leaders uh, for any type of uh, challenges that are in the future. To the breach, getting into the trench. Over. Go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so they just reached the objective, but they're still taking on enemy fire. Team leader Liz Versova trains the platoon's weapons on the open field ahead. Because we were expecting some enemy reinforcements, as well as a BMP-2, which is an infantry fighting vehicle. They take that out with an AT-4, a weapon similar to the Javelin anti-tank missiles knocking out real armored vehicles in Ukraine. Hey, target enemy. Pull side quick. The enemy here is simulated, but the challenges are real. As soldiers used to desert warfare for the last 20 years, build a new type of readiness. A lot of the soldiers have not seen snow before in their entire lives, so being thrown into this environment can be challenging. About 200 kilometers northwest, American HIMARS, multiple rocket launchers with the 1st Infantry Division, stand guard, sentinels shrouded by pines. We can fire on the move, uh, stay in uh, high positions and very uh, well concealed and covered locations for long periods of time. Once the fire mission is processed, in a matter of seconds, it's able to deliver its uh, rockets or a missile. These HIMARS and their operators arrived in December as part of the U.S. military's enhanced presence in the Baltics. At the beginning of last year, there were 600 American troops in the three Baltic nations. Now, there are about 1,500. So they've got a defense set up right here. Colonel Richard Ikenna commands the 1st Infantry Division's artillery forces. He says U.S. HIMARS operators have trained in Estonia before, but now it's different because they're also part of Estonia's collective defense for an extended period of time. We are in the scenario here. It really brings real time what is going on here in order to operate um, and to be as ready as possible. The HIMARS team provided long-range firepower for this month's annual winter camp exercise, involving hundreds of troops. This is how Estonia prepares for war. But because they're a member of NATO, they wouldn't go it alone. And NATO allies are fully integrated into the exercise. Estonians defend trenches that French forces try to seize. British troops clear the way for Danish Leopard 2 tanks to punch through simulated defenses. Tanks similar to the ones soon to be seen on the Ukrainian battlefield. NATO allies hope the Leopards, along with Britain's Challenger 2 tanks, will give Ukrainians more power and protection than the Soviet-made tanks currently in the fight. The battles in the Ukraine will be slow, and what you need is you need a heavy tank, like Challenger, that can take a hit, uh, and uh, more so than a T-72, which will probably be destroyed after one round. Um, Challenger can take multiple hits and stay in the fight. But training Ukrainians to use these tanks effectively won't happen overnight. Well, tanks are much weighted. We know that. And, and uh, I really hope that we are just not too late for that. Uh, Russians still have, even they have lost more than 2,000 tanks. They still have thousands of tanks in the stocks they can bring to Ukraine. They still have uh, missiles. They still have rockets, which means that, of course, Ukraine needs as much help as we, as we can give. Estonia's defense minister tells VOA his country has spent 1% of its entire GDP supporting Ukraine and nearly 3% of GDP on self-defense. We have a clear understanding that every tank destroyed in Ukraine is one tank less behind our border. How worried are you that Russia could attack here? Well, we have to be ready. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, we are like the front door of NATO. And when the front door is locked, then it's safe to be inside of the house. So, so simple is that. A message NATO allies have taken to heart as increased defenses 
pour in. Carla Babb, VOA News, Tapa, Estonia.